Uh, 7.39 the time now. Look at this. Because in just under three hours, a British-built satellite is going to blast off from the Earth's orbit from the Plesetsk Cosmodrome in Russia. Its mission to gather the most comprehensive detail ever about air pollution in the Earth's atmosphere and also try to predict natural disasters. This is the Sentinel 5P satellite. It was created at the Airbus Defence and Space Facility in Stevenage. It's the most recent addition to the family of Sentinel satellites monitoring our planet, which are part of the Copernicus Earth Observation Program. It's the first one to measure atmospheric chemistry and greenhouse gases. It'll provide information about our air quality and how our climate is changing. The mission is designed to last seven years and will fly 499 miles above the Earth. Joining us now from the European Space Research and Technology Centre in the Netherlands is Joseph Ashbacher, the European Space Agency's Earth Observation Director. Good morning to you. Tell us about why we should be so excited about this taking off today. Uh, good morning to the viewers of BBC. I'm very excited. Although it is not foreseen in our protocol, in our procedures to be excited, but I have to admit I'm very excited about today. So what um, will happen? It's taken off in three hours. What will happen? What exactly is the, is the schedule for today? Okay, what will happen uh, in about three hours, uh, we are launching Sentinel 5P, uh, which is the first uh, satellite uh, measuring atmospheric chemistry, air quality atmospheric chemistry, from our uh, launch site or from the Russian launch site in Blesetsk, uh, which is um, uh, about 800 kilometers north of Moscow, uh, and at 11.27 sharp uh, uh, Central European time, uh, the satellite uh, will blast off on top of this rocket. And what is its purpose? What is it going to measure? I understand uh, uh, it's going to be taking quite an interest in the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, it will measure air quality. Uh, air quality at the precision as it was never measured before uh, because the resolution of this satellite, of the instrument, is actually quite good. It is seven kilometers by three and a half kilometers, which is really at the scale of uh, cities or major industrial uh, complexes and uh, installations. So therefore, uh, it is measuring uh, uh, very important uh, trace gases like carbon dioxide, like methane, like NOx, uh, which is uh, a very important indicator of uh, or the result of uh, pollution uh, caused by mankind, uh, and therefore it really measures this on a daily level uh, and provides up-to-date information about air quality uh, for the health of people, but also uh, for inputs into research models for climate change and a better understanding of our planet. So how quickly will we get this information back? Uh, we will get it uh, well, as soon as the satellite flies over the area. Uh, within three hours, the data will be processed and put online uh, for everyone to use. I should probably highlight that the data are free of charge uh, for everyone. Uh, so it really is a free and open data policy which we have applied. And therefore, anyone can really download this information from a website uh, which uh, will uh, make this data available. Joseph, I should ask you, I mean, you, it leads quite nicely from you saying this data is available for everyone. I, I want to talk about collaboration and the fact that, you know, European Space Agency is working with the, with the UK, of course. Was this um, collaboration going to continue after Brexit? Have you guys thought about the impact it will have? Uh, this is a very tricky question. Uh, of course, the collaboration will continue. Uh, we should not forget that this uh, satellite has been built by a consortium of uh, European companies, uh, industry across uh, various member states of, uh, of ESA. Um, about 30 of these companies have been involved. The UK played a, a key role because uh, uh, Airbus Defence and Space uh, in the UK has been the prime contractor of putting uh, the satellite together, but also with a very important contribution from the Netherlands and many other, many other countries. So it is an international effort. Uh, it is part of the European Union ESA Copernicus uh, program. European Union, as you know, is leading Copernicus overall. But ESA is charged by the European Commission to implement the space component of uh, Copernicus, meaning to build the satellites, to operate the satellites, to disseminate data, and make sure that these data are coming to the users. So yes, uh, uh, even after Brexit, uh, the uh, cooperation will, of course, remain with the UK, because the UK remains a member state of ESA, and this is very important to distinguish from leaving the EU. 
uh, ESA and EU members are different, uh, and the UK will remain a very important member of, of the European Space Agency. Very briefly, uh, the launch today. Tell us exactly what will happen when the countdown takes off. What are the uh, crunch points we need to worry about? Uh, the most important point, of course, is liftoff, which is also the most risky because there things could eventually go wrong. Of course, we all, all hope nothing goes wrong, but this is a very critical point. Uh, then soon afterwards, a few minutes afterwards, the first stage of the rocket will, uh, will uh, uh, be dropped. Uh, then the fairing will be dropped and the second stage. And then another very critical moment is the separation of the satellite from uh, the rocket. Uh, and then uh, once the satellite is separated, uh, of course, uh, the, uh, the uh, about 90 minutes afterwards, the acquisition of the signal from the satellite and the opening of the solar panel are very critical moments for us. So uh, today, soon after lunch, we should know that everything is fine. We are very anxious to see that, and we're really looking forward. Oh, well, we wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Joseph Ashbacher, um, Earth Observation Director from the European Space Agency. 7.45 now. Let's get some fresh air.